Week four of the Call Pro Championship Series is finally among us. We are a fourth of the way done with the series and all the 16 weeks we have. Hello again, everybody. It's the iconic Shaman Oshijax here on commentary, and there's a lot of action awaiting you here tonight. Our second match of the night after the opener, you'll see Mario Magnelli the third versus Simon Rogue. Simon Rogue trying to remain undefeated. Mario Magnelli the third trying to get some momentum back under his sail. Now. El Supremo and Peter Moore. This is our semi-main event, a rightful semi-main event, as after tonight, one of these men who are currently 0-3 will be 1-3. And, and in our main event, Father Kensington currently on a roll, faces Rickon the Fisherman. Like Mario Magnelli III, Rickon is trying to regain some momentum. But in tonight's opener, we got a hot one for you. It's Logan Fox taking on John Ralphio. And it's certainly gonna be an exciting match to see. Now, Logan Fox, like Simon Rogue, ladies and gentlemen, is undefeated currently. He's at 3-0, having taken out the likes of Father Kensington, Rick and the Fisherman, and recently Mario Magnelli III to be 3-0. He has certainly proven himself on his bio. He is talented, a multi-talented, wealthy, rich athlete. He has excelled in the Call Pro Championship Series so far. But for a man like John Ralphio, a man I think who should feel robbed that he hasn't really been mentioned as a big player or mentioned as an MVP of any past week, you gotta think, this man who now is calling himself Mr. Main Event for his past two performances in the last two main events of week two and week three. You gotta think John Ralphio has definitely got a little bit of a chip on his shoulder and is looking to make a big point here tonight and hand Logan Fox his first loss. But Logan Fox is going to have to make, he, I don't know how to put it for John Ralphio, but Logan Fox isn't going to go down easy. John Ralphio is gonna to have to go through Hellfire and Brimstone if he's gonna hand a loss to Logan Fox, especially his first one. John Ralphio starting off beautifully with that backdrop suplex. Logan Fox already looking worse for wear as John Ralphio, the aspiring Hollywood film director, getting on roll, but Logan Fox, the more talented and uh, versatile athlete, the one who makes more sense to be in a wrestling ring right now, holding his ground against John Ralphio. But John Ralphio is capably hanging in there with Logan in the early minutes. Back up to the Palmer Noble tie-up. Logan wrenching the arm and drilling an elbow right into the back of John Ralphio's spine. Nicely done, and now Ralphio responding in a big way with a nice spinning neck breaker. Nicely done there from John Ralphio, except Logan Fox is still in this match. As Logan, now with the Irish whip, Logan, Irish, or not the Irish whip, but he leapfrogged over him as John Ralphio would be going for a clothesline off the rebound, but Logan with great ring awareness and great agility to avoid that. Nice move, but he couldn't avoid that as John Ralphio takes him down with a tilt the world head scissor takedown. He tried to snap suplex there, but John Ralphio quickly standing his ground. Both of these men equally matched so far in a balance of offense and defense. John Ralphio knocking Logan Fox out to the apron again, but Logan quickly able to get back in the ring before John can knock him off. Now Ralphio working the legs. That might not be a smart idea to try to out-wrestle Logan Fox on the ground. If anything, Logan Fox excels in mat wrestling, but John Ralphio might have an advantage there if he keeps on him like he just saw right there with that beautiful springboard back elbow. you got to stay aggressive on Logan Fox because if you don't, Logan Fox is going to go aggressive on you and you got to make him play defense the whole time if that makes sense, ladies and gentlemen. We know Logan Fox can get the job done. He has won two of his past matches via submission. He excels on the mat, and he excels at out-wrestling his opponents. You are going to have to be aggressive with him, but you are also going to have to be careful that it doesn't get too low, because any little bit of room that Logan Fox gets, really, I think the less room Logan Fox gets for his moves, the better, which is why you might question me and say, well, why stay on him then if the less room he gets, the better it is for him. Well, the other thing you still gotta think about, ladies and gentlemen, is that you can't let him have a chance to breathe. You can't, you, you, you gotta already know what you're gonna do against Logan Fox. Logan Fox will calculate every single maneuver 
in his mind and he'll take you down if he wants to because he knows how to do it. It's up to John Ralphio to respond to Logan Fox's strategies. So far, he's capably holding his own. Logan Fox, the Irish looking to the corner. John Ralphio quickly getting out of there, not letting Logan Fox keep him pinned down. Logan trying to go for a headlock takeover. John Ralphio with that sleeper hold. That's the same sleeper hold that made Mario Magnelli the third submit in week two, but it's not going to get Logan Fox here, especially when Logan Fox, you know, I, I don't I don't ever see Logan Fox submitting to anyone, especially when he's got a rear naked choke and the varsity lock in his arsenal. Now Ralphio could be looking for the director's cut, but Logan Fox was on his feet. You know he was ready for it. So John knows he's got to do something different here. Ralphio knows he's got to he's got to do more if he's gonna give Logan Fox the move he likes to call the director's cut. Logan tried the waist lock from behind. Ralphio now going to the legs. Maybe this might be a smart idea though for John Ralphio. I would think Matt wrestling at first is not smart, but then at the same time, you take away Logan Fox's vertical base, it makes it easier for John Ralphio to connect with the director's cut. Logan trying that belly to belly, belly or belly to back suplex. Can't get anything. Logan caught his kick, but John Ralphio, there you go. See, that's what I was talking about. John Ralphio knew what Logan Fox was trying to go for. He had a strategy. He thought of what he was going to do if Logan Fox had a counter to his counter. And he executed perfectly. Nicely done from John Ralphio with that integuri. And John Ralphio remaining admirable competition for Logan Fox as we head to the five-minute mark. Trying to trade jabs again with John Ralphio. Headlock takeover, but John Ralphio quickly to his feet. Actually, that was a snapmare, but John Ralphio was quickly to his feet. Now Ralphio again with the tilt to world head scissors, taking Logan Fox right down to his feet. Now John calling for the end. Could John Ralphio be looking for the director's cut? Yes, he is. He's got him. And boom, baby, there it is. The director's cut one, into the cover. Two, two three, two. what? That was so close, ladies and gentlemen. 2.9, legit. I had to turn over and ask a producer if that was it. And producer said, no, the match is still going on. Logan Fox got his shoulder up before three, according to our official referees at ringside here. Logan Fox, amazing resiliency, able to get the shoulder up just when it looked like John Ralphio had the match won. John Ralphio connecting with that DDT there. You know John Ralphio has got to be thinking, what is he going to do to defeat Logan Fox now? He kicked out of the director's cut. He's going to have to do more to beat Logan Fox here. Logan Fox, though, this is, this is obviously Logan Fox's toughest opponent yet. I have to say so myself, ladies and gentlemen. Logan Fox has handled himself capably against his past three opponents. Outright dominated Mario Magadelli the third, to be exact. I wanted him just to kind of show you uh, just the kind of talent he has. Uh, Father Kensington never had an answer to Logan Fox, and Rick and the Fisherman, it, it looked like it was close, but Logan pulled it out in the end. John Ralphio, though, he has been on Logan Fox from start to finish, and Logan Fox, if he's not careful, could walk out with his first loss tonight. As John Ralphio One, goes to the cover following the two, backdrop suplex, down, but two. Logan Fox able to get the shoulder up just before three. Once again, nicely done. Trying to lock up with John Ralphio, but John Ralphio playing great defense, knowing Logan Fox is going to try to reach in. Logan trying to play aggressive. John Ralphio is more than ready for it, though. And you know if John Ralphio wins this match here tonight, this is going to be another great scene to add to what might be his upcoming documentary on his rise to fame and fortune. John Ralphio trading shots with Logan Fox. Logan Fox still trying to get in. Oh! Logan Fox with the takedown, rolling out of the way of John Ralphio, knowing John might have been up to something. And now Logan Fox with the snap suplex. This could be bad news for John Ralphio. If Logan Fox gets going now, this is going to 
This is going to affect John Ralphio in the worst way as Logan Fox with the Irish whip going for the shoulder block, got it. John Ralphio able to hold on to the second rope though and go to the outside. Now Logan Fox with the forearm One, chopped to the chest. Two. Ralphio now on the outside. Logan Fox affirmatively back in control. But John Ralphio telling Logan Fox, you're gonna have to do more than that. Now Logan, uh-oh, snapmare, uh-oh, this could be trouble. No, wait, Logan. Yes, oh, oh, and look, takeover, and look, takeover, varsity lock, varsity lock. No, but John Ralphio is too close to the ropes. That's what happens when you lose your ring awareness right there. That's the same mistake he made against Mario Magnelli the third. Logan Fox did not have John Ralphio in the middle of that ring, far away from the ropes. So John Ralphio was easily able to catch that rope break right there and avoid the varsity lock. Logan Fox from behind. Beautiful backbreaker, nicely done from Logan Fox as he's got John Ralphio with the varsity lock again, but John Ralphio once again is way too close to the ropes for it to make a difference. But you see the varsity lock has taken a lot out of John Ralphio. John is struggling now as Logan tried that bridging backdrop suplex. But again, John Ralphio is just too close to the ropes. Logan Fox is gonna have to pull John Ralphio away if he's gonna have a chance. Logan with the drop kick to John Ralphio. Down goes Ralphio. The aspiring director is probably about to have a box office bust like in the middle of that ring. And Logan Fox with the inside cradle. Two, three, no. No. John Ralphio able to get the shoulder up before three. And now Logan Fox. Got John Ralphio up high. Logan with the belly to back suplex. Jesus goodness. Logan. What's he playing here? I, I have no idea, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'm just sitting on my hands watching this match. This is so intense between Logan Fox and John Ralphio. Oh, oh my God. Oh, oh, oh my God. What, what was that? I don't even understand what that was. That was a beautiful maneuver nonetheless. And that side headlock, that side of sleeper hold you saw there, the chin lock, uh, that didn't get Logan Fox victory there. John Raphael again, able to get to the ropes, but you see Logan Fox with these high impact moves and submissions wearing down John Ralphio, taking the fight out of him. Now you see Logan Fox has figured out a counter to John Ralphio's strategy. And Logan Fox got him over into the varsity lock. The varsity lock is in, but again, John Ralphio is too close to the ropes. Logan Fox has to get him in the center of the ring and far away from the ropes. Wait a minute, Ralphio with the schoolboy. Two, no! How in the world is Logan Fox not done him? There you go, that's what he needs. The varsity lock is in, the varsity lock, but no, John Ralphio. This time Logan Fox had him in the right spot, but John Ralphio has just, I think everybody has seen what happened in week one and they've all learned to develop a counter to the varsity lock. Most of these men have been using their legs. That and just the fact that I don't think Logan Fox has done enough damage on John Ralphio. Logan Fox is looking to end the match early and John Ralphio just looks to be taking a beating right now. But you know, Ralphio doesn't want to quit. He doesn't want to go down to Logan Fox, but he might not have a choice though, again. Logan with little sense of ring awareness. I don't know if it's arrogance. I don't know if it's just inexperience, a little inexperience. Go figure on Logan Fox's part. I mean, just Logan Fox is making mistakes here. As we all know, probably this match should have been over five minutes ago. But Logan, there it goes. A Four for fifth time, I'm not sure, but he's got the varsity lock. Ralphio again, though, is able to get to the ropes. It makes no difference what Logan Fox attempts here, ladies and gentlemen. John Ralphio is fighting against the varsity lock. Ralphio has that move just too well scouted. Now Ralphio, though. After, after Logan caught him with that kick, caught him with another Enziguri, the aspiring Hollywood film director, Mr. Main Event, John Ralphio could probably get back 
into this match. Now Ralphio from behind with the schoolboy. No, Logan Fox too close to the ropes. Now Ralphio locking horns with uh, Logan Fox. Brought him down with that jab you just saw there. Logan Fox responding with a forearm shot of his own and a double axe handle to the back. Both of these men are just going back and forth. It's a, wait a minute, this could do it here. Ralphio with nowhere to go and is back to the ropes and he taps out. Logan Fox finally pulls out that rear naked choke. That's the one thing you gotta think about. First time he pulls that out, last time John Ralphio ever thinks about trying to break out of that submission. Logan Fox improves to 4-0 after a great opening contest. We'll be right back from this commercial break, ladies and gentlemen. Back, ladies and gentlemen, Mario Magnelli III looks to rebound from his stroke of bad luck recently against the undefeated hardcore gamer Simon Rogue. Mario Magnelli III, after the first week, he has just been on a downhill incline. Mario has not really seen the best of luck. He lost a close main event match in week two against John Ralphio and he just recently got outclassed by Logan Fox from week three. But week four can hold a different tale. Like we saw with John Ralphio against Logan Fox, Mario Magnelli III could deliver the first loss of this man, to this man, this man's first loss. He could hand deliver it to him on a silver platter. Simon Rogue, ladies and gentlemen, last week's MVP, the week three MVP, absolutely deserves the honor too. I mean, it's been unbelievable just how Simon Rogue has handled himself here. He had a great classic match with Peter Moore, where Peter Moore dominated him, and Simon Rogue fought back. And in week two, he had a great match with El Supremo. And El Supremo, while he showed a lot of heart, Simon Rogue showed the resilience, the drive, the will to win. And that's exactly what carried him through week number Trey against Rick and the Fisherman, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, Rick and the Fisherman. Now, in week four though, things can be a little different as Mario Magnelli, like El Supremo, has shown that he's got the heart of a warrior, and that he's gonna do anything and everything it takes to fight like hell. But that's, that's going to be hard for Mario Magnelli III to do here, ladies and gentlemen, because he's dealing with a man who's on a roll, a man who just not will quit, a man who just not will, he just, he just refuses to lose. He refuses to die. He's not using any cheat codes, ladies and gentlemen. He's not using any glitches. You know, he's not, use, he's not taking any shortcuts. He's in it for the long haul. He's in it for 100% completion because that's how Simon Rogue rolls, baby. He either wins or he, or he loses. He's not gonna be, he's not gonna, you know, be snippy about it. He's not gonna whine, he's not gonna cry. He's just gonna aim to win or he's gonna die trying. And he aims to not make it game over, not once. He wants to have that perfect run. 
And so far he's had that, but Mario Magnelli the third could be a whole different story for him. And so could the other remaining competitors as the weeks go on, ladies and gentlemen. As it stands right now, both of these men really matched so far, not really going either man's way in the opening, but Simon Rowe could probably start turning it around in his favor and run away with this match if he continues connecting with more moves like that Tornado DDT. Nicely done, you saw there from Simon Rogue as Rogue trying for something there. Magnelli looked like he was trying to catch a Rogue with a gra or with some kind of move. But wait a minute, Magnelli! Oh! <laughs> wow! 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 I wish we could have replays of that, ladies and gentlemen. That was amazing athleticism you just saw there. He leapfrogged over Simon Rogue and it got him with a springboard back elbow. And now Mario Magnelli the third, all of a sudden, no, never mind. Simon Rogue, maybe I spoke too soon, but the victory roll into the bridge. One, two, three, no. Mario Magnelli the third able to get the shoulder up, but responding well. Both of these men are just, it's kind of like with Simon Rogue's match against El Supremo. They are responding well to each and every a maneuver they have and I don't know if it's not really it's not really like you know and anything you can do I can do better it's not braggadocious it's not a show off -y match it's a competitive match where when one man has a move that he executes another one executes something I, I don't it's not one upsmanship it's just it's it's a hard fault battle and that's exactly what I think any wrestling fan would like to see in the Call Pro Championship Series as these eight men duke it out for $10,000 in cold hard cash. And Simon Rogue with the leg drop. Mario Magnelli not in the best shape, but Mario trying to fight off Simon Rogue. Simon though with a press slam, drilling him right there. Nicely done, Simon Rogue. What's he thinking? Going up high. Got him with a leg. No! Mario Magnelli able to roll out of the way and responding with a rolling senton. Nicely done from Mario Magnelli the third. It was a very nice counter. Very nice answer to that attempted high-risk maneuver. And Simon Rogue again trying to vault over with that leg drop, but Mario able to get out of the way. And Mario taking advantage of Simon Rogue's risk and making him pay for it with high impact maneuvers such as that power bomb and that drop kick you just saw. Beautiful from Mario Magnelli III. And then, oh Jesus goodness, what a flapjack. Just really took the life out of Simon Rogue with that one and drilling him again, just throwing his knee into that mat, working the legs putting some hurt on that knee. Wait a minute, Simon Rogue with the victory roll. One, two, three, no. Simon Rogue though is using his speed. His athleticism is keeping him in this match. I think he learned a little something from El Supremo. I think he learned he likes keeping it. He likes having a high tempo uh, or high energy up tempo attack. Sort of like his name was Chip, Chip Kelly on the Philadelphia Eagles, if that makes sense to any of you. Trying for something big there, but Mario Magnelli fighting him off. Magnelli trying for something big, and no, look, Mario Magnelli! Showing he can go up tempo as well. Caught him off guard, had the element of surprise there with that small package, but no, couldn't get him. Too close to the ropes, and I think Simon Rogue might have been ready for it too. Mario Magnelli from behind. Going for that Sicilian slice. That move, that signature move he used to defeat El Supremo in week one in that 20 minute classic. Ended a cover with a small package. No, only gets two and a half. But you see now Mario Magnelli realizing that up-tempo offense from Simon Rogue, realizing he's going to have to try to keep up with him if he's going to beat him here or he's going to have to slow him down. Mario Magnelli using his wits. You know Mario Magnelli, oh, look at that. What was, both of those men missing with whatever they were attempting. Rogue looked like he had something up his sleeve and um, so did Mario Magnelli. And now look, Magnelli could be made humble here in that camel clutch, but he was getting to the ropes there. And now Simon Rogue calling for game over on, um, 
Mario Magnelli could be looking for that ZDT already, that patented Brain Buster DDT he loves to use. And oh, look at that sleeper slam. Nicely done, and Mario Magnelli just One, twitching on the mat. Doesn't look like he knows what hit him, but he does have the wherewithal to kick out before three. That doesn't end the match here today. Now the lockup, Magnelli from behind, into the schoolboy, but again, Simon Rogue just too close to the ropes. You see Mario using his intellect and his wit about him. And you know Mario is fighting for his life as it stands, ladies and gentlemen, like he has to. Mario Magnelli refuses to surrender. He refuses to lose. Mario knows failure is unacceptable. He knows he has to win here. If he doesn't win, if he doesn't win at all, ladies and gentlemen, if he doesn't get in that final six to go to the playoff, if he doesn't win this tournament, the Pro Championship Series, he's going to be sleeping with the fishes because he will be unable to pay his debt off to the Mariana family. Now both of these men trading maneuvers, going back and forth with the chains. And wait a minute, oh! <laughs> Mario Magnelli looked like he learned something from that encounter with Logan Fox as he just got Simon Rogue with that beautiful belly-to-back suplex. Simon Rogue trying to go from behind on Mario. Mario not having any of it. Into the schoolboy, away from the ropes, now two! No! Simon Rogue able to get the shoulder up. Wow, nicely. This is a nice, sleek match we're seeing between these two. A very nice technical affair. Both of these men elevating their game, looking to make an impact as Mario goes into the cover again. No! Simon Rogue able to get the shoulder up. The standoff between these two men. I enjoyed myself the drink at ringside here. Again, ladies and gentlemen, I, I forgot to mention this earlier, but wait a minute, Mario into the cover. One, two, no, able to get the shoulder up. But uh, if you like what you see right here, ladies and gentlemen, if you're liking the Call Pro Championship Series so far, or if this is your first time viewing this and you haven't done this already, please give this video a like, please subscribe, please share this all around. The Call Pro Championship Series grows every day and every bit of support we get from all you wonderful people in the call universe we thank you for it you're the reason we're One, here right now two, count two. and no mario magnelli had the cover off the suplex i held my breath there though because it could have been the end of the match but i didn't want to say anything it was only a two count though wait a minute mario both of these men just trying to trying to quick covers. Now it's come down to who can wear down the other more. Now Mario could have been looking for the Sicilian shot. No, Simon Rogue tried the German suplex. And Mario rolled out of it. Mario tried the drop kick to make it easier to set up the Sicilian shot, but Simon Rogue not having any of it. Simon Rogue with the Irish whip into the, ro into, the uh, into the corner, excuse me, into the corner. And now he's got Simon Rogue in a trio blowing. Jesus. Almost like he punched him where the sun didn't shine. It was a low shot either way it went, but it was effective as Simon Rogue drilling Mario with that tornado DDT into the cover. One, two, three, no! Simon Rogue st staying on Mario Magnelli the third. It, it can really go either man's way at this point. Wait a minute, into the cover, no! These men are just so close right now, ladies and gentlemen. It's absolutely unbelievable what's going on here. As look, Mario Magnelli tried to um, throw Simon Rogue into the corner, but Rogue able to use some some uh, nice athleticism using a handspring to get out of that. Time that counter nicely done. Uh, looked like he could have learned that from uh, I don't know shit. Uh, I don't even want to try to reference a game, and Simon's going to kill me because he'll he'll have remembered a game, and I won't. He'll make me feel stupid for it. That's how Simon rolls, ladies and gentlemen. He is that deep in hardcore video gaming. Maybe not hardcore video game. Not not not. You know what I meant. Damn it. Ugh. Back to the match. As whoa, look at this. Nice. Simon Rogue. He he. Uh, Mario Magnelli wrenched onto his arm, but Simon Rogue able to use some sleek counters, sleek maneuvers to get out of there as Mario got him with that Frankensteiner, and now Mario looks like he could be looking for the Sicilian shot. 
Got him. Oh, he's back up. Sicilian shot to Simon Rogue. And this could be his first loss, but wait a minute. Mario, what are you doing? Oh, he's going for a second one. A second Sicilian shot. But wait a minute. What? What are you doing, Mario? In the match, you got him where you want him. What are you doing? What are you... I don't get what Mario is doing. I don't know if Mario has something to prove. I don't know. I don't know exactly what Mario Magnelli is thinking of here. But you had a shot to end the match. Why didn't you? Why didn't you just end the match right then and there? Because now look, you've left Simon Rogue with an opportunity to put this away as Simon Rogue lifts you up and drops you with the ZDT into the cover. One, two, two, no, 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 I, uh-uh, no, 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 just, just no, he should have been sleeping with the fishes, oh, wait a minute, maybe I just spoke too soon, maybe a second dose will do it into the cover, one, two, three. So you avoid one CDT, Mario Magnelli, but you can't avoid two, and this will cost you in the long run because the one shot you had to end the match after two Sicilian shots, he should have went for the cover, but after this second CDT, you see right here, that was what Simon Rogue needed and did to just win and stay undefeated at 4-0. We'll be right back. And we're back with our semi-main event, ladies and gentlemen. We're finally, we're going to answer a question. Which one of these men will finally get their first win on the series? It's El Supremo versus Peter Moore. Both of these men have had heart in all three of their past showings. But all three of them have ended the same way for both of these men. They have all ended in defeat. But tonight... That changes for one of them. Tonight, Peter Moore or El Supremo will walk away with their first win under their belt. But you gotta imagine, which one is it gonna be? Who out of El Supremo and Peter Moore will walk away successful? Either way as it goes, El Supremo, while it's all doom and gloom for him, while he's just He's looking to save his orphanage. You know it means a lot to him. Peter Moore, as you saw, with a big smile on his face, seeing sunny days at the end of the road, keeping that positive, upbeat attitude, despite him being 0 and 3. That's definitely the type of attitude you need to have. The Irish whip into the corner. Simon Rowe. Simon Rowe. God damn it. That's the first time. I, I know Simon. That's two things he's going to kill me for. Uh, it's totally because they're both blonde. And that's why I got fucked up over that. Jesus. Uh, back to the match. Peter Moore backing El Supremo into the corner. El Supremo looked a little hesitant to try to trade blows with El, or El Supremo. Peter Moore on that go, but definitely starting to kind of break out of that shell a little bit. But there you see Peter Moore responding to El Supremo after he did that moonsault with the slap and now with the DDT. Beautiful maneuver from Peter Moore, the former varsity cheerleader looking to get into a university, get a college education. That's all Peter Moore has wanted to do. And El Supremo, on the other hand, unlike him, he's trying to stop the Mexican government from shutting down the orphanage, which he has loved for, fought for, and cared for so much, cherished ever since he too was a little child at the orphanage. El Supremo 
trying to drop kick on Peter Moore, but Peter Moore standing his ground. Peter Moore backing up into a corner, and El Supremo, I see both of these men, I see for both of these men, they're kind of hesitant right now. I don't know if it's butterflies in their stomach because it feels like, you know, both of them have been told, wait a minute, into the cover with the schoolboy. El Supremo got the two count there. I think that both of them have been told, you know, the good news, one of you is going to have a win in week four. The bad news, you're both going to face each other. So it's kind of like, I don't know if they feel for each other. I don't know if it's an experience. I don't know if it's just they, they don't really want to try to get too into it because, you know, they're filling each other out and don't really know what to expect. But, I mean, it's just, you know they're missing something here, ladies and gentlemen. They're, they're just not clicking into that high gear, you know, both of them can click it to, especially El Supremo. And for Peter Moore, he doesn't care anyways. He's got the momentum, had the momentum with that pump handle drop anyway. But El Supremo now looks like he heard a little bit of something of what I said, trying to light this man up with some uh, nice uh, high, high, uh, High tempo, really fast paced offense. Um, El Supremo with the press slam though. I mean, I, I don't know what to say here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm stumbling a little bit. My throat's kind of, you know, I, I think I need a little better refreshments here, but I mean, I don't know exactly how to put this, but I, I'm just, I don't know how to, I don't know what to say about this match, ladies and gentlemen. One of these men is gonna have a win. One of these men is still going to be undefeated. So it's really sort of hard for me to try to commentate this, especially when there's like a lot, so, so, sort of a lot investing. Either way, you just look at the end of the road knowing one of these men is still going to be winless while the other may turn his luck around on the turn of a dime. Peter Moore, though, with the lockup. Oh, goodness. Breaking the eyes, I think that I think that was an eye rake there. He just did to uh, El Supremo. El Supremo trying to get back in this. I, I, I'm just seeing the hesitation from these men too. Like I said earlier, it doesn't really seem like both of these men are kicking it into that high gear because there's just too many butterflies in their stomach. If it's me, you got to let it go. This is coming from an experienced veteran in the call scene who's worked as both a commentator and a wrestler, for those of you unaware. I mean, you've got to let it go. You've got to let your inhibitions go, and you got to put it all out there. At the bottom, at the bottom line, there's ten thousand dollars waiting at the end of the road. And while it is early in the season, it's too early for you guys to just have this, this kind of, these kind of butterflies. You should have had it in week one. After week one, no, that's it. You're on the road now. There's no turning back. You either win or go home. El Supremo locking up with Peter Moore, though, as he goes to the drop toe hold. There we go. There's a little something El Supremo can use right there. A little high-paced maneuver. Wait a minute. Supremo going up high. Look at that. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Throw it all to the wall. Pedal to the metal. Balls to the wall. Let's go. El Supremo connected beautiful with that top rope heel kick. And now Supremo with a power bomb on the varsity cheerleader. There we go. That's the fire I've been talking about. That's what I've been wanting to see out of El Supremo right there. Tied up with Peter Moore again, though. Peter Moore still has a chance in this match. Back rake. Down goes El Supremo. Now Peter Moore feels like he can go for the varsity suplex. Can he get him? Or the varsity plex. Or, what is it? The spirit suplex? I don't, I don't even know. Ah, cover. One, two, three, no! It's the, it's, it's the spirit suplex. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I got a little confused. It looked like he would have been looking for the spirit suplex, but uh, he hesitated a little bit there from the looks of things. And I, I just, I, I got confused there with Logan Fox because, you know, both of them, one's a current varsity athlete, the other one's former. But El Supremo looks like he could be looking for El Aguil Supremo. Trying that spinning heel kick, but Peter Moore standing his ground. Peter Moore with the collar and elbow tie up. Look at that! Wow. Oh, wow. El Supremo just showing off right there, saying, no, no, you're not going to do that. With that beautiful headstand you just saw, that was nicely done. <laughs> I don't know any other way to put it. Springboard moonsault! 
right there. That was a little late. I, I'm just, I'm wow at that earlier maneuver though that El Supremo did. Now El Supremo turning on the Jets, picking up the pace. And this is exactly what he needs to do is now look, Peter Moore seems a little hesitant, doesn't seem so sure that he wants to be in the ring at the same time with El Supremo. El Supremo though knows he's got no choice. He's got to win here. Now El Supremo going to play, thank you El Supremo! Wait a minute, Supremo, I think he says he wants it one more time. One more time for the crowd, missing with that running maneuver there. Now Peter Moore with the backdrop suplex, benefiting from that one as Peter Moore now drilling El Supremo with those shots. I don't get why El Supremo didn't just try to end the match there. He connected with El Aguil Supremo, but I guess that comes with the territory when as of last week, ladies and gentlemen, when El, El Supremo hit that same maneuver, that Phoenix Splash that he calls El Aguil Supremo, wait, beautiful belly to back suplex from Peter Moore. That's not exactly the spirit suplex, but it's a nice move nonetheless as El Supremo connects with the press slam into the cover. One, two, could he have him? No, he doesn't. It was a beautiful maneuver though, ladies and gentlemen. The El Aguil Supremo was, and um, the problem though, that I think El Supremo had the little hesitation I even saw there on his face to go for that cover. He still remembers the scene he saw last week One. when Father Kensington covered Two. in a mess of his own blood, Three. stood up and El Supremo going high, no! <laughs> El Supremo, you sly trickster, showing he's not going to fall for that. Peter Moore was running into the ring, was ready for it. El Supremo quickly able to spin on the spin through the middle rope and get back in the ring. And Peter Moore tried something off the Irish whip there, but couldn't get El Supremo. El Supremo standing his ground so far, trying the Irish whip. El Supremo with the counter. El Supremo with the back elbow off the, off the springboard. Very nicely done. You can't fault El Supremo for what he's doing here. Now we're talking. Now this is a match, ladies and gentlemen. We're back in it now as El Supremo into the sunset flip. Two, no! Now we're talking. Now these two men are finally starting to pick it up as El Supremo sends uh, Peter Moore to the outside. Taking his time, letting Peter Moore back in the ring. And Peter Moore responding with a shoulder block. El Supremo ran at him, but Peter Moore was quicker. But El Supremo dominating now. Peter Moore still looks unsure of this. I don't know if Peter Moore is quite necessarily aware of what's happening here. I, I think he's still unable to overcome that hesitation. But El Supremo now finally with a fire in his belly. Looks like somebody at least has been hearing what I had to say in the early minutes. And I cr cannot criticize El Supremo for finally t starting to turn it up. This is exactly what these fans have wanted to see here. The fans who have all followed the Call Pro Championship Series from week one to right now in week four. Peter Moore trying to lock up with El Supremo. Trying to get him, but no, Peter Moore, there we go. Peter Moore finally got him with that clothesline. Looked like they were gonna lock up or have a standoff, but Peter Moore decided he's gonna make a move. El Supremo though! Beautiful kick to the back of the head, into the cover. One, two, could he get him? No, he doesn't. Still not gonna get Peter Moore right there. El Supremo locking up with Peter Moore, pushing him down as Moore tried something. El Supremo says it's time for El Aguil Supremo, his signature maneuver. Wait a minute, El Aguil, no, excuse me, El Supremo with that Hurricanrana into the cover only gets two though. Peter Moore is still in this. Peter Moore is still fighting in this match, ladies and gentlemen, but maybe not for long, because if El Aguil Supremo is connected with one more time by the Mas Luchador, then you know for a fact, Peter Moore's gonna have this one. El Supremo though dominating the young Peter Moore. Is Peter Moore, oh look! Peter Moore got him with a kick! Vaulted over the top rope as he knew that El Supremo was trying to, wait a minute. Oh, baby, Frankensteiner! The Frankensteiner, and that could do it! That's the one big maneuver Peter Moore may have been looking for. A vast look virus database has now. been updated. Look what's going on right now, ladies and gentlemen. Lifting him up into the Frankensteiner once more! Is that gonna be all she wrote? One, two, 
and three. That's what does it. Peter Moore, you see he's thrilled about this one. He just picked up his first big win. One Frankensteiner did it, but Peter Moore needed the insurance, so he connected with that second one, and it was the second one that put it away and gave Peter Moore his first win, whether it be by luck or skill or whatever. We'll be back. Welcome back, and here is our main event, ladies and gentlemen, the one we've been waiting for. Father Kensington takes on Rickon the Fisherman, and it's definitely going to be a good match to see, ladies and gentlemen. This man you see coming out right now, I mean, <laughs> the role he has been on here ever since his loss to Logan Fox in week one, Father Kensington has seemed like a man possessed, and some of the actions he's committed over the past few weeks have made me feel really uneasy about him, and I see the audience has felt the same way about Father Kensington. Now, as for Rick and the Fisherman, though, it's the opposite story for him, whereas Father Kensington got on a roll and picked up from his loss uh, in week one. Rick, on the other hand, just seems to have gone downhill after defeating John Ralphio with an amazing top rope powerbomb. Rickon has suffered back-to-back -back losses to the likes of Logan Fox and Simon Rowe. And so tonight, Rickon has probably got Don Maria yelling in his ear about how he needs to start winning more. Otherwise, he's not going to get any money, and she's going to be very upset. Hell, knowing her, she might even threaten to dump him because he's a poor old sack of shit. But anyway, we got this match going on right now. It's, oh, my goodness. Beautiful kick from Father Kensington in the corner. Rickon went down, but he quickly got up, back up to his feet. Irish whipping to the ropes. Kensington looked like he was going for something big, but Rickon, being the veteran he is, knew uh, Father Kensington was going to go for something big. Now Rickon backing up into the corner as Father Kensington throws another jab. Collar noble tie up to the waist lock. No, Rickon with a back elbow. Nicely done. Able to get out of that again. Rickon playing solid defense so far. But Father Kensington stopping Rickon's defense with a beautiful atomic drop. Nicely done from Father Kensington. And right now, ladies and gentlemen, I have to, I have to think though, with the way Father Kensington has been acting lately. Let me let me just put it to you like this, ladies and gentlemen. Last week, if, for those of you who've been afraid of Father Kensington in a way or just think he's a creepy old dude and think there's just uh, more forces at work or just another force that isn't related to Jesus Christ at all, those suspicions may have been confirmed last week as after what I saw there. Wait a minute, Rickon with the small package. Two, got him. No, he doesn't. After what I saw last week, though, after El Supremo, hit Father Kensington with El Aguillo Supremo. Father Kensington, covered in a curtain of his own blood, stood right back up to his feet like nothing ever happened. And I still don't understand it, ladies and gentlemen. I still don't understand exactly what force willed Father Kensington to do that. But you gotta love his chances here against Rick and the Fisherman, especially considering he has the momentum on his side. But as we've all seen, that momentum could turn on a dime. That momentum could end right here like it did for Peter Moore tonight, who picked up his first victory moments ago. We hope you've been enjoying this week four action so far. I know I have. If you hadn't done it already, please like this video. Please subscribe for more of the Call Pro Championship Series. We love exactly the responses we may or may not have been getting from most of you, but we still love the fact that for those of you who watch this, we love you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. And uh, there's nothing more than we can say than just keep up the support, man. We love you. Now,
Father Kinsey with the Irish whip into that spinning gimmick that I still can't quite figure out. It looks like a lariat, but then it feels like a headbutt, but then it feels like an uppercut. I don't know exactly what it is because he's, he's, he's contorting himself so fast that I can't quite make out what he's doing. But what I do know is that Father Kensington has control of the match so far, but Ricken with an earful of what Donna Maria has got to say in his corner, he knows he's got to step up his game. Donna Maria is definitely not impressed with what's going on right now. Now Ricken, look at this, there we go. Ricken turning it around. Donna Maria certainly liked the sight of that. Ricken with that uh, shoulder breaking look maneuver, if I'm not mistaken. Nicely done. Now to the collar double tap and a headbutt. Ricken on fire right now, seeming like he's getting a little momentum, turning his way, but no, Father Kensington slipping out of Ricken's crutches. Both of these men just seem evenly matched so far in our main event. And you know for both of these men, a big victory in a main event could go a long way, especially for Rick and the Fisherman. I mean, look what it did for John Ralphio before he unfortunately met Logan Fox in the opening contest. Now there is an interesting thing I'd like to mention for John Ralphio, but I'll mention it to him in the back off camera. But either way, as it stands, ladies and gentlemen, it's not about John Ralphio or anybody else. It's about these two men. It's about the week four main event. It's about either Father Kensington walking out of here three and one, or it's about Rick and the Fisherman finally stopping his downhill slide and going two and two and putting a stop to Father Kensington's role. Father Kensington tried to go for something there, but Rickon stood his ground. Both of these men at a standstill again. Again, just, I think they're both ready for each other's strikes. Not a collar double top. No! Beautiful counter from Rickon the Fisherman. Looked like Father Kensington was going to try to catch him with a, with a small package, but Rickon able to use his body weight to push down on Father Kensington. Great counter. First time I've seen it, and that's exactly why Rickon is the... It, that's exactly why Rickon is a veteran when it comes to this uh, call wrestling stuff, man. That's exactly why Rickon would have an edge over his competitors. That's what I meant to say. But anyway, call double tie. Father Kensington with the elbow to the back of the head. Rickon again not looking hot, but no. Rickon from behind with the waist lock. And Rickon with an inverted, or excuse me, inverted or reverse? No, no. Inverted suplex. Inverted suplex from Rick and the Fishman. If it was reversed, it would be going the other way. I'm not sure about it. I'm not sure about it. Uh, keep forgetting my definitions of inverted and reverse, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody will bring it up to me. Either way, Irish whip into the corner. I know that for sure. Rick and trying to go for something there, but Father Kensington, I think Rick and just kind of gave him a break there. I think I think Rick and might have been looking for that top rope power bomb, but I think he. You know, I think he gives Father Kinsey a little too much cred to say, you know, I don't think it's ready for that, and I think you're ready for it. But he tried the bridging German. Father Kensington, though, way too close to the rope, so he's not able to get a pinfall there. And Father Kensington going downstairs. That's exactly the sort of tactics you see from Father Kensington right there, like choking on his opponents, those low blows, those jabs below the belt. That's exactly why people get a little uneasy around fucking... Um, Father Kensington because even though you think his message is good you know he's trying to save his church trying to do whatever it takes to keep his church alive so he can continue praising Jesus Christ like he wants to that's why some people think Father Kensington is not the man he claims he is they don't think he's a man of good Christian faith they think something different of him but Rick is going up high with a diving headbutt Rick and letting uh, Father Kinskin know how he feels about him, and you know Donna Maria had to love that one. Rickon with the headlock takeover. Rickon standing. Father Kensington back up to his feet. Collar and elbow tie up. Rickon trying for a suplex. Father Kensington, though, stands his ground and catches Rickon with a suplex of his own. Great counter from the pastor right there as Father Kensington trying something again, but no. Rickon able to stand his ground. Looks like both of these men, they're, they're just really evenly matched right now. And that's exactly what you'd like to see for a main event match, ladies and gentlemen. you like to see two competitors just evenly matched. Just, it's, it's all the way through for the Pro Championship Series, but especially in the main event. Because you think, you would think if you're in that main event limelight, 
you're gonna give it all, you're gonna give it your all, you're gonna give it 100%, you're gonna do like John Ralphio did and rise to the occasion. One, now wait a minute, two, Father Kinsigan with the cover, but Rick and able to get the shoulder up at two. But like I was saying, especially in the main event, everything is amplified times 10. You have to really just bring your A game because the main event match, ladies and gentlemen, is where all these fans, all wrestling fans around the world are gonna look at you through a microscope and really see what you're about. And they see that John, they saw that John Ralphio is more than just a flashy name. He's more than just a film director. He's a guy who could potentially win this whole thing if the other seven men aren't careful. But Father Kensington doesn't look to care about that any way he goes as we go back to our match with a nice pump handle drop. And now Father Kensington drilling shoulders into Rickon the Fisherman. This is exactly why I think Rickon could make a big statement if he beats Father Kensington here. Really, both of these men could. But you gotta think Rickon would make the biggest statement of them all if he defeats Father Kensington, who is on a roll. But Father Kensington looks like it doesn't matter to him either way. It looks like he's about to put this match to bed. And Rickon is in dire straits. That's definitely not good for Rickon as look at this, Father Kensington lifting him up high. Beautiful DDT from the top rope. That could be death as we know it into the cover. Two and three. We'll talk about a twist on Rickon's own stuff as Father Kensington is now three and one, continues his impressive roll of momentum defeating Rickon with a top rope DDT of all things. Nicely done for Father Kensington. He just made a big statement. Father Kensington could be very well becoming a favorite in this Pro Championship Series. We thank you for watching us in week four, ladies and gentlemen. But unfortunately, I do have some news to spread as this intro goes away. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to make it clear that the uh, Call Pro Championship Series will be on hiatus for approximately a month. Uh, I have not been told exactly why this is happening from management or anybody else. I have just been told through management to give you guys the notice that the Call Pro Championship Series will be on hiatus for a month, and I don't know exactly when it'll be back, but as soon as it's back, you're going to see week five, and week five, there's going to be a very big announcement made if it won't be made within the hiatus. But there's something very big coming your way, and you'll want to stay tuned for that. We're not dead. We'll be back in a month. We promise you that. Until then, good night, ladies and gentlemen, and enjoy your day.